Hi, I wanted to show you what making an isometric building can look like. I've uh, actually made a sketch of what I want to do. I recommend you do this so that you can see uh, kind of what you're, you might be getting into or uh, be thinking. You don't have to go uh, crazy with this, but I wanted to get started just showing you how to get an isometric made um, and turn it into a building. And I wanted to show you some tips and tricks. So I've got Photoshop set up, ready to go. I need to make a new layer for drawing, and I'm just going to name it drawing. Um, I'm going to copy and paste a lot of these lines to make it a little bit easier. Next thing I'm going to do is I really do want to see my rulers up, so I'm going to bring rulers up. And I want to drop a, uh, a middle point, because I want to know where the middle is on the canvas. So I'm going to make it snap to, so it's 32 pixels, and I'm immediately going to turn snap off. Uh, because I don't want it snapping to the edges and I'm going to start just drawing you know my two pixels for the bottom edge and then I'm going to go ahead and start making this bottom line uh, for my my building okay that's a lot of clicking I'm doing up because I'm doing it pixel by pixel and to make this a little bit faster I'm, I'm going to end up copying and pasting this so I'm going to come over to my lasso tool I have anti-alias off and I'm going to grab this line, and I'm going to copy it, I'm going to paste it, and I've got a duplicate of that line. I'm going to select the Move tool, and now i got to click directly on the object. If I don't, I'm not going to do anything, so i got to grab the object directly. If you don't like how that works, I'm going to uncheck Auto Select the Layer, and now whatever layer is selected in this panel, I'll actually select. So even if I try clicking here, it won't. I can select that object by holding down the command key and now I can actually select this object down here. So I can make the uh, the line a lot longer by just doing this. Um, so then I can make it extend out. But what I really want to do is I want to uh, go ahead and make the other side. So I'm going to go ahead and layer. I'm going to find the transform panel which I don't see off the top of my head but it's because I don't usually use this method of making transformations. So it's under Edit, Transform, and I'm going to flip horizontal. I, I would almost never do it that way. I would do it a different way. Um, but I'm trying to show you the menu so you don't get confused. So there I've got the bottom of the building. And what I'm going to do is select these two layers, and I hold down Shift to select them. And I'm going to use the layer panel to merge the two layers. I never do this. I hit Command E. And so now I have those all on one layer, so I can move them around at once. But that also means I can duplicate them and I can drag it straight up, and now I have the top of the building too. More interestingly like that, I can duplicate it again by copying the layer. I'm going to transform with Command T, and I'm going to rotate 180 degrees, confirm the change, and then drag this straight up, and I've got the top of the cube. So I can make cubes very quickly with isometrics instead of Photoshop. I'm going to go ahead and drop my verticals. And remember, I'm using uh, Shift to constrain this portion so I'm drawing straight lines down. There are other ways of actually handling this corner right here. You can use three pixels and then in the middle you have the line. It doesn't really matter. Um, we're, we're shooting for something that looks nice, not something that, sorry, uh, is perfect. So I'm ready to go here in terms of making more lines. So I'm going to first take these three layers and merge them. My cube is all one. Um, and now I can take um, Command Z, by the way, undone is the undo button. I, I can make that um, little offshoot of my uh, my building with this. Now see how it has a bump out? So I'm going to do that with this line. And um, I've got that one there. I'm going to duplicate it again. And I'm going to bring it straight out. And that's now the uh, top edge right here. This is going to come down. This is going to come down. And I need another one for the bottom of uh, this as well. So I'm going to drop it straight down. And I I want it as many pixels away as that. So I'm, I'm not going to worry about it right now, but I've got the basic framework. Um, I'm going to turn off the background layer just so we can see this. There's the three lines. And what I really want to start with is I'm going to take these three lines and merge them. I'm going to have the building on one layer and my three lines here. I'm going to start erasing pixels I don't need because there's a couple I don't need. So I'm going to get rid of these. And um, oh, I do need some of these. I'm going to draw that line right here. So I'm going to change back to brush, and I'm going to go uh, from this point here, 
I'm going down one and two, one, two, one, two. Now I can erase. And I've made my corner. I'm going to do the same wherever I want it to connect over here. So I'm going to take the brush and I'm going to say, okay, uh, here, down two, down two, and down two. Erase that. I can get rid of that part. And I've got a really small atrium. I probably want to make it bigger. Um, just looking at my sketch, I can see that. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that and re-brush it in. So here's where I'm just gonna edit pixel by pixel until I kind of get it where I want. I think this is the appropriate place to start doing it. Down two, down two, down two. You would go down like that, perfect. I'll take my eraser tool. If you like that, you can hear my uh, keyboard, can't you? I'm gonna drop my vertical. One, two, one, two. And that's going to be on this layer, so I'm going to select this layer and I'm going to start getting rid of these lines. This will look more naturalistic then. That looks great. Okay, uh, I have one more vertical to drop, and it's this one, or two more. I've got this one. Eraser tool again, get rid of that. Sorry, I've got Outlook open so that when you guys email me, I can find out. Uh, there's my little bump out, and I can make that doorway very easily. One, two, two, and drop. Got a doorway. Um, I have room for a window here. I can put that on layer, later. Uh, I also have a window over here. So I am going to go ahead and merge these two layers, and I've got my building all in one layer. But the big thing here is I can take my lasso tool and select this line here, copy and paste, and I've got enough wiggle room with that done to move it down, duplicate it, and I can make the bottom edge of the window. Look at that. I mean, I've got a big plate glass window, and I have it a pixel from each edge. You know, I might want to go ahead and say it's not going to be that big. Oh, they're on separate layers. I'm going to merge them. This is where the layers becomes a difficulty, is uh, every time I make one, I have to go ahead and merge them down. There's some people who will work on layers exclusively and not worry about that. So I've got my window. See how this is really that easy. I, I do need to make my little uh, part that comes out because it makes that, I make a lip at the top and then I have the hole down in the middle. So um, here I'm just gonna go ahead and copy and paste that line again. That is not the line I really want. Well, it actually is. It's just in the wrong place. Um, so I'm just going to move it like a pixel or two that direction. And that's a couple pixels out. Right? I'm going to just do start doing this now to make the outside edge. And I'm going to go ahead and erase the inside. Uh, why do I do it this way? Well, I wouldn't. I, I really want to show you how you can modify the structure. I would actually uh, start by really um, thinking carefully about where I would want my things, where I want to uh, have my objects, and then I wouldn't even draw what I don't need. So at this point, I'm going to go ahead and merge these down, get rid of what I don't need. I still have this peak here, which I can use. I'm going to use the lasso tool and select it. I'm just going to move it up two pixels by going one, two. I'm in a good place here. Um, you know, I might move it down one. And I'm going to connect the dots again. I'm going to do uh, this and that, that. Well, that will work. It's not perfect, but I like it. So I have another copy of this straight up from it that I'm going to um, 
take the lasso tool and select around the region here, copy paste, and uh, I can make it tall like, make it this tall. That right there is a good place for it. Um, where I want to get rid of pixels is right here because I'm going to have it connect on this side. I'm going to have it connect just a little bit over. Okay, so I'm ready to merge these and again I'm going to erase the inside. So I'm very methodically uh, building my object. Now I'm going to undo that because what I can do is I can keep this line around to become the inside edge of my hole. And that's where this technique actually uh, shines, is to be able to do that. I'm going to drop my verticals here and here. I think there's an extra pixel or two that might want to go away in there, but I also want to drop a vertical right there. And we can look down here if I turn off that guide and really get a view of um, what this looks like now down, down below. And it's not bad. It actually it looks pretty good if you look at that 100% view of the little guy. Um, and, th and that's why I have two views set up, so I can really see what I'm doing as I create. So, time to select this for the whole. Copy paste. I'm going to transform with Command T, and I'm going to rotate 180 degrees. Hit Return, and notice how it changes the view of it. I'm going to drag it down. And uh, I've got the interior hole where my tree sits inside of. I'm going to move it down one more set, and then I'll draw in these, these pixels here. So some, some uh, artists won't do that because they don't like how it looks. I, I don't mind at all. So in this case, I am going to drop down my straight line for my interior. And I have everything except for the tree now. And the tree I'm going to do on a separate layer so that I can make sure I can cover up what I want and don't want. So I'm going to make this the building layer, make a new layer, and this is going to be just for the tree. And I might build more layers as I go in. So to rough in the tree, just so we can get that going, I'm going to start down here and I am going to draw like this. What I'm going to do is turn off the building and I'm going to look for areas that I have over, you know, that zigzag pixel and I'm going to get rid of them. I'm going to erase those extra pixels because otherwise it makes it look too heavy in those areas. I'm looking at this and it's too straight so why not just get that away and I'm going to take this nice line. I like how it looks. I'm going to copy paste it and I'm going to rotate it like this. Now when you're rotating anything, make sure this is set to nearest neighbor, otherwise you'll be unhappy with the results. Um, it'll, it'll alias them. That's much more what I'm looking for. Notice I need to get rid of that double pixel. And then I can merge these together. Uh, and I'm, I'm ready to keep drawing. I'm going to go to, there we go, and then one. And I'm doing this uh, pixel by pixel kind of organic sketching of where the tree branch will go. Um, just thinking about how thick it should be. I'm going to erase that pixel and that pixel. I'll just put one right there. So I, do I have to be precise? No. And am I tracing my little uh, my sketch? Of course I'm not. I, it doesn't really matter. So what do I do at the top of these forks and the branches? Well, I'm just going to allow it to uh, go from my branch and become part of the drawing um, into the, the, the fluffy tree area. Okay, so this is another branch back there that looks really horrible right now, so I'm going to fix that. That looks much better. Um, and we'll go ahead and do that. Uh, and I'm going to add a couple more just spots around here for 
reference. Now I'm able to create my fluffy little trees. And I'm going to do that on another layer because that way I get to play and not destroy anything. And then I'll merge it down when I need um, to. I'm going to put tree in front of layer two in this case because I want that in front. And here I'm going to add my tree branch. I'm going to add a couple of these in here. And I'm going to go back and I'm going to erase some of those because look how thick it looks down in the drawing area. So I want to make sure that I'm not getting those corners in there. Oh, that is going to look awful when it gets down in there. So I'm going to just do that. And so now's the time I'm going to go back in to the, the pixels and make sure I don't have any of those double zigzag corners so it looks a little bit cleaner. So here I would, and I can choose where I want to delete them too. I can delete them off the inside or the outside depending on the zig or the zag. And uh, This is just now tedious work, but I had a plan in mind. That's the, the, the key to this, is I'm not just starting and kind of playing around. I played around beforehand, and then I really made a plan of action before I even sat down at the computer to start working. That way I wasn't wasting my time by uh, trying to figure it out as I go along. I'm just doing what my plan is and that's a really important thing to learn as a creative is that I really don't want to waste my time I just want to do the work once so I've got a pretty good looking tree um, I don't like this up here yeah that looks better I think I might get rid of that entirely I need to do this over here and that, that's the other thing that I wanted to tell you about pixel drawing is not all the pixels have to be continuous. Sometimes you suggest lines. So I'm going to turn my building back on, and wow, that really is coming together. Um, so the, the first thing I'm going to do with tree is I want to know where I need to erase. But I won't know that because all these pixels are, are, are lines right now. So if I start coloring in the tree, it will cover up what's behind it. So that's going to work well, and then I can erase what I don't need here. So I'm going to turn off... I don't even do what I said I was going to do. I'm, I apologize for that. I'm going to go ahead and fill in the greens here. And um, part of how I'm going to do that is to, to look at shading techniques. So uh, I'm going to make it white on the background so we can really see the tree. I want to talk to you about uh, how to do that coloring and shading. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start with grayscale. I have black for my outlines, and I'm going to now start making shades of... Uh, of gray. I'm going to take a 90% gray. I'm going to draw a little box in. That's not really what I wanted. I wanted it 10% gray, which okay. Let's try it one more time. Yeah, that that's 10% or that's 90% gray or 10% bright. Let's start with 80 then. I'm going to make a little box for it. I'm on the eraser tool. See, it happens to me. What I did is I just had to pay attention to what my workspace environment was and really uh, investigate. Why is this not working for me? And that led me to, to figure it out. Um, and that happens to me all the time. It just is a matter of technique and remembering to check. So I'm going to make a shades of gray. I've got dark, dark black, and I'm going to start making a value scale. So here I'm going to make a 30% gray. Um, and there's all sorts of ways of doing this, but I'm going to make a 3x3 three three square of each of these colors. You can load up colors if you really want. But this is me going to be... I'm going to color with gray first, but this is my technique for figuring this out. So I'm going to drop another um, 20 off of this to end up at 30% gray. Oh, wrong way? Yep, wrong way. So I'm going to change that back to 70% brightness. And I'm on the eraser tool again because I'm a genius. There we go. 
and I'm going to do now uh, a 90% for the lightest color. So I have a color system now um, that I can use, and I'm going to think about where's the darkest going to be. Well, the darkest is going to be in this trunk, but I don't want to use this color yet because I want to be able to shade in the trunk. So I'm going to use this color. I chose the eyedropper, and I sampled from it. I'm going to go back to the brush tool, and I'm going to paint in anywhere that there's supposed to be branches. This only works if my, um, my colors for the lines on the outside are black. Otherwise, it will color the lines too. So like here, I don't want that to happen. I'm just going to undo in this case and keep painting. Let me show you why I'm doing this value system real quick. And then um, we'll actually continue painting it in. And I'll show you all the shading techniques that I'm going to talk about. Uh, because that's, that's the neat part. So I'm not using the paint bucket because I can't fill the space. And I'm going to go, obviously, where there is going to be um, building because I can always erase that. So I use the paint bucket to grab a black piece and to keep going. What I want to do now is get the shading. And I want to think about this systematically. The light's coming from this direction up top, way up here, and it's falling on the tree. And where is it going to be in shadow? And it's going to be in shadow where it meets the tree, where the branch is at the bottom of the branch on this side. At the crux here. And I can make some shading down on this side because this is the side away from the sun. And I don't have to make the shading contiguous. I can if I want, but this is where I can use pixels to their advantage. So I've got quite a few pixels. Um, I'm going to put a couple right in here because this is a really dark branch down in here. And um, here's where the magic is going to happen. I'm going to go ahead and add a hue saturation adjustment layer. And what I'm going to do is scroll down and hit Colorize. And all of a sudden, those become red. Because what I'm doing is I'm adding red to wherever it's not black, all the way up to where it's blown out white. And I can choose what hue it is, and I can increase the saturation, and I can decrease the lightness of the overall pixels. The, the uh, tip here is the technique we're using means don't touch the lightness. But I can touch the hue and saturation all I want. Here's what I gotta do is I gotta find something that will turn into brown when I drop the saturation. And there I just made the brown of the trees. That's all there is to it. I made a value system and I made the brown of the trees. Here's the fun trick. I'm gonna turn off the hue saturation value and I'm gonna take the lighter gray, the midpoint gray, and I'm gonna use that to paint in on the tree layer wherever there'll be highlights. And there's sometimes there'll be highlights wherever light falls on it. So um, there might be some here where the sun will hit it, some down in here. Um, I might see one or two along the front edge of branches. And now I can go ahead and turn that hue saturation on, and that really is looking tree-like. Look down here, in the small view, that looks much better. I do want to get some of these contiguous so that it looks like a, a better view of the tree. And so I'm really going to highlight this edge of the tree. And that looks much better. It looks like light is hitting that side of the tree, and it's dark on the other. So I've made my hue saturation changes, but the problem is, is that I need to limit it to a certain area. I need to actually just say it's only these pixels because I want to make green for the other pixels. This is the trickiest part of this process, is how to limit those uh, pixels to just a certain area. So I need to select everything that's gray inside of here and add it to a mask, or I can just stack up hue saturation changes 
um, having masks where I can have them. What that means is I'm going to take the, the magic wand tool, turn off anti-alias, and I'm going to select the fluffy part of the tree. I'm going to add this fluffy part of the tree and this fluffy part of the tree, and I'm going to make a new layer, a new hue saturation change that is only going to affect the fluffy parts of the trees. I'm going to put it above the other one. So I'm going to call this one trunk, and I'm going to call this one greens. And the, now here's the real trick, is I'm only going to have them affect the tree layer by holding down the option key and clicking between the layers down. And that, what that does is it groups them. There is another way of doing that. Um, let me step backward. I'm going to select all three of these and do layer, group layers. Uh, and that actually groups the layers um, in their own group. That might not be exactly what I'm looking for. I may be looking for a different menu, uh, but we're going to see what happens with that. So I've got them grouped, and then we can come back and fix it later. Uh, they've changed how Photoshop works over the years, so that doesn't really matter. I'm going to start drawing in the tree area now, and I'm going to use these same colors. I can turn off the trunk view. I can select a, a gray, and I have to think now, how dark a gray is that area of the tree gonna, where it's fluffy going to be? It's going to be a little bit lighter, so I'm going to start with the mid-tone gray. And in this case, because I have a contiguous area, I can just go ahead and paint in with the paint bucket. I still want to think about what's darker, so I'm going to grab this darker area, and I am going to brush in this part as being kind of dark from the shadows. And it's going to be darker down here. Around the branches as well. So a lot of single clicks. And again, in the value system, I'm going to make this green using that same cool menu we used before. I'm going to add a couple random areas that are just up there. And I also want to go the other direction where I've got highlights. And I'm going to do that around, whoop, I don't want to go over into the black area. I can actually, it's not a big deal, um, where it's going to be lighter. And I want to look down at that little menu too, or that little uh, preview of it, and see how this looks because I don't want it to look too crunchy. It's actually looking really exactly like what I want. So this is all about how to shade um, the tree, the shading with pixels, knowing that my light is up in this corner, shining down, and just thinking about where those shadows would fall, where the highlights and shadows would be. Are you going to be perfect at this? No. Do I worry about it? No. I'm going to turn on the visibility of the trunk adjustment layer. And here I'll add it, edit the green adjustment layer. So I need to look at properties. Oops. And I'm going to again tell it to colorize. And notice how it only affects the fluffy part of the tree. Here I'm going to change it to green. I'm really going to increase that saturation. And that's a nice looking tree so far. I'm going to keep on going with saturation until it's too much and then scale it back. I've got a beautiful looking tree down here. That's exactly what I want. I'm going to turn on the visibility of the building and I can erase the parts of the trunk I don't want, but I, I'm very happy with how that looked. So I, what I want to try something is knowing that um, my little chips are on the layer with the tree. I'm going to go ahead and cut them off. Just select them, cut them. I'm going to come down to the building layer and I'm just going to paste them there and what I want to see is how they look. And it's obvious that the adjustment layers in my group here are affecting what's below it. So I need to change that. I need to edit it so it doesn't affect that down below. And here's where I'm going to hover between the layers with the option key held down. It's the Alt key on the, the windows. I'll click between them and look at how that goes to grayscale again. So now I can use the grayscale to paint the building and I can make it colorized then, so I can color the building the way I want. So uh, that makes it really efficient. I'm going to come to the tree layer, and I'm going to erase the pixels I don't need that are going to be 
part of the building. So that the, my tree is inside the building. Just complete that, and I'm I'm good now. Uh, so I've got my grayscale on layer one. What I'm going to think about is what how dark, relatively dark, are, are my buildings going to be, edges going to be. Here's what I'm thinking. This is going to be the lightest place right in here. Uh, and it's going to, I'm going to make it this light because I also, or I'm going to make it this light, excuse me. So I'm going to put that right on top. So I'm going to select that. I'm going to take the fill tool with Command G and I'm going to go to the building layer and I'm going to fill it. So now I have my top layer filled. I'm going to select this color and that is going to be here because that, or excuse me, it's going to be here. This is the lighter one. This is going to be that lightness. And then um, this one and this one are going to be one step darker. So I'm going to select this and paint here, paint here, paint here, and here. And now I've got the dark, dark. I'm going to select that. And I'm going to paint here and here. And I'm it's really coming together now. What I need to do now is just make sure I've got all the pixels done. I think that would be appropriate here, and it looks good. This two areas I think are going to be really light. I'm going to make them blue, kind of like they're a blue for the glass here for that window. And I could make thickness and show all of that, but I'm not going to worry about it right now. Let's go ahead and um, start to colorize this. So I'm going to add a new hue saturation uh, layer. I'm going to um, colorize it again. And I got a red building right now. I want to make a green building because this is my tree building. And I want it to be less saturated and less uh, vibrant green than what I have uh, up top. And that that's kind of what my idea was there is to have it look like that and then I can um, make a window the color with the blue right here and I, then I can make a door right here the door you know that's not a bad idea is to just take this and um, I'm gonna go ahead and fill the door right here Ooh, I gotta be on the building layer to do it that is not the right color I want that color right there that's much better um I'm gonna take these pixels and I'm going to make them that same gray. Instead of having it go to the black, I'm just going to use that color there instead. That's sometimes what I was doing here. I don't have a black edge right here, and sometimes I was obscuring the black lines. Um, and I'm looking at my little icon, and I'm really happy with where this is going in terms of looking the way I want. I haven't thought about how this is going to cast a shadow over here. Yeah, I haven't thought about how the fact that this uh, tree will cast a shadow onto this building, so I need to think about that now. Um, I'm going to take the color that I have right here, which is um, my lightest gray, and I'm going to bump it up to one gray darker, and I'm going to take the brush tool, and I'm thinking the um, tree will start to make a shadow right about here. and be about that thick. And now I'm going to go to the next darker color. And that is that color. I'm going to select this one and make this even darker because that shadow will fall there as well around the building. And then I've got my darkest color as well. Up here, I think we're going to start seeing the incidence of um, this on the edge, where we're going to start seeing the canopy of the green, fluffy green stuff. That's what it's called, the canopy. So I'll paint that in. And then here's the trunk. So I do have to think about how the light interacts. I'm going to select that darkest um, gray, and I'll go ahead and kind of fill in these lines. I can take my fill tool. And, oh, no, I don't want to do that. If you're having closing of the gap problems, you can change on the fill tool this tolerance. That will change how that works. But uh, in my case, it's we're just painting a couple pixels in. So this will be just as easy. 
Now my door is really going to suffer here because this is all should be the darkest dark at this point. So uh, I, my, my door probably want to change that to a different color entirely. And that, again, is going to be um, selecting with the magic wand tool here. I'm going to select this area here. I'm going to make a, a new adjustment layer, hue saturation, and put it above this other one. Um, and, and we'll see what I end up with. Um, I'm going to paint that area in with uh, the lightest color. I've got to make sure I'm editing and painting on my building layer. So I'm going to fill in my glass right there with the lightest color. And we'll edit my hue saturation. I'll colorize it. I've got pink right now. I'm going to bring it over until it's blue over there and I'm going to increase the saturation. So that's now like a cyan. But this door looking that blue doesn't look too bad. I think I might be uh, close to done. I probably want to edit some proportions. I'm going to um, just turn off the layer visibility there. I'm pretty happy with that. The, the shadow isn't great, but it's a good start. But this is really what I'm looking at for you to do. There are so many ways to add more shading to this. If you look at the additional tutorials, I think you'll be uh, pleased with what you find. There's one more thing I need to t take you through, and that's um, turning it in. Because right now I've got a document that's tiny, tiny, tiny. So I'm going to return this top view to uh, normal. First, I'm going to save this guy. I'm going to call it demo. I'm going to save it on the desktop. Um, and I'm, because this is when it will crash, is when I do image size. I'm going to return this view to 100% to really show you what's going to happen. Uh, so I'm zooming out with command minus, and now it's at 100%. I'm going to change the size of it. And here's, the, I'm going to go original size. I'm going to change the width and the height making sure nearest neighbor are on, I think I asked you to do 256. So I'm just gonna change it to 256 and hit enter and it quadruples the size. This is what you're gonna turn in. This is the final size you're gonna turn in. And you can turn it in as a Photoshop document. That's just fine. So I'm gonna save this and I'm ready to upload that. Um, that's, that's it. So realistically, creating this um, little building is not hard. There's all sorts of variations you can do. I do recommend you stay with straight lines because they're easier to draw instead of trying to do a whole bunch of curves. But you can do organic lines like these fluffy little trees. You'll find um, a tutorial about how to draw humans. You know, at some point I'm going to try drawing a corgi in here um, just for fun. This stuff is used in video games, and it's still used in video games today. You can find them on iOS. So get to work and um, have fun while doing this. This isn't a long project on purpose because I want you just to get it done and have fun. I've showed you a lot of techniques today. There's all sorts of ways of doing this. You could actually put, um, instead of doing grayscale, you could choose to make each pixel a different color by hand. I choose the grayscale because it allows me to build a uh, value system, and we call that in painting grise, and it's used by painters today to create um, artwork on canvas. So, have a great day.